Europe right now uh, is uh, really disheartening. I mean, you have to really feel bad for some of these people in some of these countries over there because they're already talking about, you know, they're going to have rolling blackouts on a daily basis this winter because they don't have enough power. So they're already starting to put times in when people can plan on not having power. They're also facing a huge shortage on uh, food supply and power with heat. People over here in this country are going to have to be paying attention to that also because of the high price of energy costs that it's going to cost you to heat your home this upcoming winter. And I've done several videos on that. We're going to, going to roll all the way back through that. But these are things that you have to be really prepared for. The cost of food in this country is going to be going up astronomically. The cost of living in food over in Europe is doing the same thing. We have China that is still under partial lockdowns. They're still having protests and stuff because the Chinese are just fed up with being locked in their homes like, you know, a caged animal and not being able to do anything. Um, a lot of them are seeing that, you know, most of this is just BS and, and they don't want any part of it anymore. We have world chaos is going on on top of world famine and hunger. Ukraine isn't being able to send a lot of the grains and stuff to some of these third world countries, which is causing a ripple effect and the pressure on some of the other countries like the United States to step in and help out. But we didn't have a good harvest this year, an abundance or a above where we have an adequate supply that we can send out to these other countries um, to help them without taking away from our own country. I feel really bad for a lot of these people in these cerebral countries where they're depending on all these other countries to help them out because of the uh, catastrophic events that they're already living through, been living through for years and years and years. And this is the third straight year that we've been in this same type of scenario for winter. The same type of plan is playing out once again. It's like Groundhog Day. Every day we wake up, it's the same thing. So what is it that we have to be doing to try to overcome a lot of this stuff? I'm going to give you a few things, a few tips that I think that every prepper should be doing. And if you're just beginning prepping and you're just starting out, these are some things that you really want to start securing now while you can. Number one, rice. Buy as much rice as you can buy and make sure that you have a place to store and a way to store it. I would highly suggest using Mylar bags with oxygen absorbers. I've done videos on that. You can go back and watch that. If you can't afford those, if you have a vacuum sealer, vacuum seal those bags and store them in a dark, cool place in your home. If you have a basement, perfect. Just make sure that there's no rodents, no nothing else down there. You may want to put them inside of a plastic bucket or something like that to try to protect them a little bit more. Number two, Pasta. Pasta and rice go hand in hand. If you store this stuff right, folks, it's going to last you for a very long time. We're talking 30 years plus if you do it correctly. All right. You're going to get a long time out of this. It's not wasted money. You can always open up your bags and use it on a daily basis down the road whenever you see fit. But right now you got to be planning for the worst and hoping for the best. Number three, honey. Now, honey has been known to be around since the Egyptian time. So having honey on hand because honey can be used in so many ways. You can put it not only in your tea, you can put it in your coffee as a sweetener. You can cook with it. You can put it on peanut butter and bread. You can do a lot of things with honey. It's a natural sweetener. I would actually have honey. Pure maple syrup. Same thing goes as with the honey. All right. The difference is that the syrup does start to crystallize on you, all right? All you have to do is put it in some warm water, put the container that it's in in warm water and let it decrystallize. It'll turn right back to honey and you're good to go. I mean, it'll turn right back to maple syrup where you were when you first bought it. Just like the same with honey. If the honey crystallizes, you do the same thing. You put it in there and then there you go. Something else that you really want to be trying to secure at this point in time, any type of canned goods that you can afford to buy that your family will eat, 
rather that be canned vegetables, canned potatoes, canned meats, any of these type of things so that you have something to fall back on. And this way here, you'll have something to feed your family. And any of those things can be mixed in with pasta and rice and make just about any type of dish you can imagine. That's why rice and pasta is so high up on the scale of prepping products, what preppers really want to prep. Your freeze-dried foods and all that, if you can afford those type of things, by all means go for it because it's all ready to go. All you have to do is add hot water but those are very expensive. So that's something that you're gonna have to really sit back and take a look at, you know? I mean, there's quite a few different brands that are out there in freeze-dried foods, but they are going to cost you a lot more money. You also want to make sure that you are securing having cash on hand. Having cash on hand is, right now, is so very important just on the fact that we don't know from day to day when the shit might hit the fan, all right? We don't know what is going to take place and it's always better to have a little bit of cash on hand and this way here if something does happen and if the banks did close or whatever else maybe you still have a few hundred bucks cash at that point in time. Now a lot of people say to diversify and get into like silver and gold and all this and if that's something you choose to do that is more than fine. Uh, it's all on what you can afford to do at this point in time in the game. You want to make sure that whatever it is that you have to do, you are doing. You are the ones that can make the decisions to either be prepped or not to be prepped. You can sit here and call me crazy. That's fine. Doesn't matter to me. Until you actually have that thought process in your head where you're not going to worry about what other people think, what other people do or say to you because you are prepping for an emergency type situation, whatever it may be, you are going to suffer through the consequences if you don't prepare because you're worried about what the other people are saying and do what is best for you and your family for the long term. That's what it all boils down to, folks. You're going to do what you want to do and you're going to secure your family's future. And that is the name of the game. That is what you call a prepper. Because in the end, you'll be the one eating a hot meal. They'll be the one trying to break in your front door. So I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. I'd like to thank you for just joining me on this video today. If you would, please subscribe. Hit that little bell so you get notified. Join the members club. We've got a lot of new members coming in. I've got a lot of stuff that's rolling out for members. Members only videos, members only live streams. You know, if it's something you can afford, do it. If you can't, you still get all the great videos and everything else in the live stream that I do on Saturday night at 8 p.m. So come and join me then. And until then, you all stay safe. You keep prepping. And I'll catch you all on the flip side.